Okay, so let me ask you this. I'll revise my statement. Are you saying that the chief ministers of opposition rule states may not be observing the Lakshman Rekha? There is, of course, a case where Satyapal Malik ji took on, of course, the Goa government. We know. So that was a different arrangement. No, but he, I, but I sincerely want you to reflect on this. There are too many coincidences here. We are talking about opposition rule states where the governors have many <coughs> run-ins with the chief minister. Are they all crossing the Mariada and BJP CMs never cross the Mariada or the Lakshman Rekha? I can't speak on behalf of the other people. I can speak only what I do know. I have not studied other cases. How is it possible for me? But one thing I will tell you. But you believe in oh. Itifak. Itifak. You believe in Itifak. No, I do not. I, I won't even say that because I do not think all the non-BGB states um, have the problem with the governors. And I also do not believe that the BJP governments, there are no differences of opinion between the government and the governor. The recent three judgments, one is regarding West Bengal, one is regarding Kerala, and one is regarding Gujarat, which has a BJP government. So I do not think we should generalize these things. Even in BJP ruled states, there have been some time a difference of opinion. Basic thing is that because our governments and that we are a democratic society, we are proud of that. Our governments are elected by the people. Therefore, sometimes people who do not understand the elected people, who do not understand the concept of the autonomy of the universities, they do not under, understand the concept that university can become university only when there is no interference by the executive. They think because they have been elected into office, therefore they should run the whole show. No universally accepted, accepted principle that universities' autonomy must be protected. Universities should be free from... Otherwise, I will just give you one example. One example because I am carrying it with you. Professor C.N.R. Rao who is the, the chief of the, uh, of the, one of our major scientific establishment, and he is not being given permission by the government, even after he has crossed 83 years. He has written a letter. He has written a letter to my predecessor. That is about three years back. And he says in that letter that Kerala has the one of the most robust school system in the country. But all bright students of Kerala who, are, who come in the category of highly intelligent, they all leave Kerala after 10 plus 2. And the result is that the research work in universities has come to a complete halt. And he has given, he and Professor Panikar, and mind you, Professor Panikar is a leftist, uh, basically a leftist uh, academic. He has his article, which was published by a journal about seven or eight months back. He is scathing in his attack on the, and he's, he is saying that all this is happening because of the political interference in the functioning of the universities. You will be surprised to know that in a premier institution like Kerala University, which is one of the oldest universities, recently CAG has pointed out there are at least seven or eight departments where there is no faculty member, but the department is there. 32% staff are on contract basis, whereas UGC regulations do not allow more than 11% of staff to be engaged on contract basis. So the point you're making is that your intervention... My intervention? Was... No, it is my responsibility. Then this is what creates confusion. 
running of the universities is not the responsibility of the state government under okay. the law. Let's, let's it is look the at, responsibility let's look at the of the chancellor. Okay, let's look at the role.